once again, good morning, everyone. And thank you for joining for this FADA's GST uh, webinar, which is on the taxation series. Uh, we will be having, uh, we will be discussing key GST issues for automobile dealers. Uh, if you remember in our journal in, during the last quarter, uh, we had done an article on GST, whether it's a boon or bane for auto dealers, and it was done by Mr. Puneet Bansal. Taking this uh, series forward, this, uh, the article which was written in a crisp manner, we'll be uh, having a detailed discussion today on what are the issues being faced by auto dealers in, in GST. So before uh, we begin our session, I will request our president, Mr. Vinkesh Gulati, to kindly give his opening remarks. Vinkesh over to you. Uh, thanks, sir, uh, and welcome, Puneet ji. Uh, good morning, friends, and uh, all the attendees. So GST has been always a point of concern since it has started. The plan was to ease our life with coming of GST and making it inclusive of all type of taxes, but the regular changes have kept us on the toes. So overall, uh, Nitya and Puneet ji has always been supportive to us on this way. And uh, he has again uh, come to join us on and tell us about the uh, issues what we are facing. So I hope once this seminar is over, there'll be a lot of clarity on how to manage discounts, incentive, GST, or what rates to take on miscellaneous charges or so a lot of things, a lot of questions have come up and uh, there are a lot of generic issues for automobile dealers, which we have already uh, requested Puniji to cover. So thanks for joining everybody. Thanks Puniji for taking this further. And I'll request my uh, participants, attendees to uh, go through this webinar. And if there are still some issues which are pe pending or not solved, you can write us back so that we can plan something later ahead again. Thanks everybody. Let's hear it out. Sirsh, back to you. Yeah, so I will now request our uh, secretary, Mr. C.S. Vigneshwar, to kindly, uh, kindly introduce both the speakers from Nitya Associates. So Vigneshwar, over to you, sir. You are on mute. Sorry. Uh, thanks so much, uh, Sahesh. Uh, first time, first start off with thanking Nithya Associates for their continued support to our association. Uh, as our president uh, said, we've had a lot of challenges in implementation of GST and a lot of questions. We also have a lot of queries uh, uh, from uh, the department and you've been quite helpful for us uh, over the uh, such a long time in terms of giving us clarity. First of all, I would like to thank uh, Puneet for being here. Thank you, Puneet ji. Thanks for gracing uh, the event today. Uh, if I can introduce you to uh, the audience here, uh, Mr. Puneet has over 20 years of experience in advising a lot of MNCs and indeed companies, uh, basically structuring the, their uh, business models and also supply chains. He also helps in optimizing tax exposures, contract review, and undertaking compliance with indirect tax. He also has rich experience in litigation as, and has successfully represented clients uh, before various judicial forums across India. He also specializes in laws relating to GST, for which we are here for, excise duty, service tax, customs duty, including foreign trade policy and free trade agreements. Value added tax, economic, special economic zones, and also state governments incentive schemes. Prior to Nitya, Energy was partnering with BMR Associates, LLP, and Lakshmi, Lakshmi Kumaran and Sridharan in their indirect tax practices. He is a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, having held the All India Merit position in CA Finance. He also holds a bachelor's degree in commerce and law from the University of Delhi. Another small thing which I learned uh, in the last 15 minutes of interacting with him before we joined him is that he was also part of the industry, the automobile industry, having worked briefly with uh, Mar Maruti Suzuki earlier on in his career. If you can also in, uh, have a chance to introduce uh, Mr. Deepak Suneja, Deepak ji has an experience of over 10 years in advising clients 
on complex indirect tax issues, structural business models, and planning supply chains in the field of indirect taxes. He also has an area of expertise, including laws relating to GST, excess duty, service, duty, uh, service tax, uh, customs duty, and foreign trade policy, and value added tax. Prior to Nithya, Deepak Ji has worked with Lakshmi Muran and Sridharan in their indirect tax practice. Deepak Ji is a member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India, having held all India merit positions at all stages. He also holds a bachelor's degree in commerce from Sri Ram College of Commerce and bachelor's degree in law. Uh, sorry, I have to take so much of time because these are not mean achievements uh, these two gentlemen have, uh, have put to their name. Thank you so much for both of you all being here. And we're looking for a very uh, conducive and uh, positive session. Sai, over to you. So delegates, before we start the session, uh, I will request uh, and also inform that uh, while registering, we had requested you to put in your questions. All those questions have been consolidated, have been shared with Koniji and his team. So most of them, I'm sure, will be taken care of. In case if any questions are still left, we have a Q&A box in place. So once his session is uh, is almost through, that's when we can uh, uh, type in our questions in the Q&A box. And uh, that uh, this, the moderation will be done by Mrs. Sai Giridhar, our treasurer. So uh, Sai Ji, I will now request you to take, take this session forward. Uh, thank you so much. So, uh, good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining. And probably uh, with the response that we have got, we can understand that uh, especially GST is an important and particularly when the GST session is pertaining to only and only automobile uh, sector, it becomes even more important for us. So, I'll not take much of time. Puniji, over to you, boss. Let's start the session. Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh... Firstly, thanks Fada, Vinkeshji, Saherji, Vigneshwarji, Saiji, everyone for organizing this session. Uh, indeed, this is a very important topic uh, because uh, this year from a GST perspective is a very important year because the first year of GST 2017-18, the department has to conclude all their assessments, audits within this year. And if any demands have to be raised, they have to do now only. So. Uh, <clears throat> from that perspective, um, all our members may be or likely to face uh, department, uh, uh, GST department on various issues. Uh, and yes, uh, uh, Vinkeshi rightly mentioned that GST was supposed to be a good and simple tax, but the way uh, this law is being amended, so many changes have been brought in it's becoming complicated by each passing day. Uh, so in today's session, uh, because we have privilege of working with many of the OEMs, uh, many of the auto dealers across the country, what we have done is uh, we have customized the session specifically for automobile dealers. Um, we will divide the session into two parts. Firstly, we'll take up uh, issues relating to automobile dealers where we'll tell that what is the issue, um, what does the law says, and uh, what should you be doing in that? And secondly, few generic issues which affect each and every taxpayer. And uh, uh, whatever questions you have uh, uh, circulated with Sahaji and team, those have been compiled. Most of those things were already forming part of the content uh, which is there in our presentation. And whatever has been left, uh, we have separately noted it down. Along with each topic, we'll discuss those questions as well. And still, if anything is left, you can uh, uh, type your question in Q&A box and uh, um, uh, we'll be addressing those at the end of the session. So uh, I'll just present my slides. Uh... Uh, so, Sahaji, are the slides visible? Uh, yes, yes. Very okay, good. great, great. So, coming to dealer-specific issues, the first issue 
uh, which is relevant is uh, nature of tax which has to be applied on sale of vehicles. This issue is actually relevant, uh, especially when we are making sale to a customer who is located outside state. So let's take an example that uh, I have a dealership in Delhi and a customer from Haryana is coming to me for buying the vehicle. So firstly, what does the law provides? Law provides that whenever there is a supply involving movement, then wherever the movement of goods terminates. So it means if I'm supplying goods from Delhi to a customer in Haryana, in those cases, if I am responsible to move the goods, then uh, the place of supply will be Haryana. If supply is not involving movement, it means a scenario where uh, the customer is coming to my doorsteps, which will typically happen for automobile dealers. He takes delivery at my doorsteps. So my showroom, which is located in Delhi, will be the place of supply. And under GST law, place of supply only determines what is the nature of tax you have to apply. So if the place of supply happens to be outside state, so in the first scenario, when I'm delivering the goods to a customer in Haryana, then I have to apply IGST. If place of supply is in the same state, means I'm delivering goods to a customer in Delhi, then I have to apply CGST plus SGST. Now proceeding further, uh, uh, again, uh, in just four years of GST, a lot of disputes have come up on this issue. So firstly, uh, uh, CBIC, which is Central Board of Indirect Tax and Customs, they have issued a FAQ. There is a draft circular which they have issued, which says that even if you are supplying goods to a outside state customer and the customer is taking delivery at your showroom, means I am having a dealership in Delhi. Haryana customer comes to Delhi dealership and takes delivery. In that case, even though there is no movement, uh, this circular and there is a Telangana advanced ruling which says uh, IGST has to be applied. On the other hand, uh, again under GST, there are couple of Kerala High Court rulings which says that because no movement is happening, customer is coming from outside state to take delivery, then CGST and SGST has to be applied. In our view, the correct legal position is that if the delivery is taking place at dealer's premises, CGST and SGS has to be applied, even if the customer is coming from outside the state. On the other hand, if a dealer is delivering goods to the customer, means a dealer's representative takes the goods and delivers the vehicle to Haryana, in my example, then IGST has to be applied. So this is one of the important point, uh, which will suggest that you can take note because what is likely to happen is that, uh, suppose the rate of tax on your vehicle is 40%, you might have charged 40%, but if you pay the tax under wrong head, Still, authorities can uh, make a demand that you uh, pay correct tax again. And if you want to claim refund of wrong tax, that you do it. Other alternate way of addressing this situation is that uh, I understand that there may be few cases only where a customer from outside state will be coming to take delivery. In those cases, you take responsibility of delivery on yourself only, you deliver the goods and then you can charge IGST. So this was the first issue which was relevant. The second issue, again, relating to place of supply, uh, whether IGST has to be applied or C plus S has to be applied is for the repair services. Now, uh, all the dealers, they also have uh, repair outlets where either for warranty or outside warranty repairing activities are being done. So the question again comes up is what is the nature of tax which needs to be paid? So what law provides is that if 
the recipient if the customer is registered under <clears throat> gst or even if the customer is not registered under gst and his address is known in that case the location of customer will be the place of supply so uh, continuing the same example if my service outlet is in delhi and there is a customer which is located in haryana he comes to my premises to get his vehicle repaired then place of supply will be haryana only only in a situation which theoretically may not apply is in case of a unregistered customer whose address is not known in that case place of supply will be the location of supplier means delhi so the legal position in this case is that if the customer is within same state then cgst and sgst has to be applied whereas if the customer is located outside the state then igst has to be applied here one point we want to highlight for which uh, we kept this issue uh, uh, many of you may be aware that uh, the government issued a circular that as far as repair of vehicles is concerned because it has two parts one is the goods part and other is the service part and typically suppose i'm getting uh, my vehicle repaired and suppose the repair cost is 10000 so the invoice will show item wise breakup of the goods which are used say for example that total 7000 and the service say that is 3000 if we apply the same example that i am a customer which is located in haryana i go to a dealership which is in delhi in that case like in the previous slides we discussed that because there is no movement which is taking place so as far as goods is concerned uh, c plus s has to be applied but here we are saying as far as services is concerned the law prescribes that because as a customer i am located outside the state irrespective wherever the repair activity is concerned then igst has to be applied so this is a second point which we need to take care of that specifically for outside state customers it may happen that uh, for a single bill which is of repair having goods and services value two distinct taxes are applicable proceeding further and on this issue uh, many questions also came up which is the gst rate on miscellaneous charges so if i as a customer went to a dealer to buy a vehicle uh say the vehicle cost 10 lakh rupees then many of the dealers they also charge miscellaneous charges say they charge a miscellaneous charge of 550000 rupees for multiple activities the multiple activities can be for facilitation and registration uh this can be for uh say bouquet which they are giving it to me cake cutting all those ceremonies etc so uh in our practical experience we have seen that many dealers as far as the vehicle is concerned on 10 lakh they apply gst uh, of vehicle which can be 28% 40% depending upon the nature but on these miscellaneous charges they charge gst of 18% considering it is as as a service now under gst law there is a concept of a composite supply and the way composite supply is defined is that when a tax payer is making two or more suppliers which are naturally bundled so uh, to understand in the context is that if a dealer is making two supplies which are interrelated to each other which are uh, uh, correlated to each other so such supplies become composite supply and then gst law provides that in such situations uh gst rate has to be applied on all the supplies uh, at the rate which is applicable on the principal supply so it means if i have bought a car of say 10 lakh rupees and in relation to car only the dealership charged 50000 rupees either for facilitation of registration or various ceremonies at the time of handing over possession etc 
the question to de determine is are these two supplies naturally bundled are they supplied together or not in our view the answer is yes these are naturally bundled and uh, for the reason that unless i buy the car i will not be needing their support in facilitation of registration or all other activities therefore to that extent in our view miscellaneous charges and the sale price of vehicle both are uh, interlinked they qualify as a composite supply where a uh, sale of where sale of vehicle is a principal supply therefore whatever is the rate of gst on vehicle whether it's 28% 40% 45% that has to be applied on miscellaneous charges so to sum up as far as miscellaneous charges are concerned you need to apply rate same as which is applicable on your vehicle you cannot subject miscellaneous charges to 18% proceeding further even on this topic lot of questions have come up and uh, uh, so this issue relates to for feature of advance so number of times dealerships face a situation that suppose i as a customer went to a dealer i wanted to buy a car worth 10 lakh rupees i gave an advance of 2 lakhs and thereafter for some reason i didn't buy the car and i also did not even bother to take refund from them under limitation act uh, after 3 years i cannot take that money back from them so dealers are absolutely legally right in forfeiting such advances so the question is what 2 lakh dealer has collected on that is gst payable so under gst uh, there is a specific provision that if a taxpayer agrees to an obligation he refrains from an act he tolerates an act this is treated as a supply of service so the main question which comes up for consideration is while collecting advance or while forfeiting advance is dealer providing any service to me or not if the answer is no if dealer is not providing any service then gst will not apply otherwise gst is applicable like on this issue there are number of cases which have gone to the courts uh, be it the liquidated damages or any sort of uh, similar recoveries so uh, all these rulings which are in front of you the first three set of rulings these are for penalties for non performance of contract compensation for feature in fact the fourth ruling is a gst ruling only so uh, this green color indicates that in all these cases the courts have continuous consistently held that G gst or service tax is not applicable but yes there is a adverse advance ruling also which in a similar situation has held that gst is applicable in our view the correct legal position is that gst is not a tax on all the collections you are making or gst is not a income tax that whatever income you have earned gst is payable gst is a tax on supply so gst will apply only if you are supplying any goods or services if no goods or services are provided then gst does not apply so in our view as far as uh, collection of advance uh, for goods is concerned gst is not applicable so in my example when i initially uh, gave uh, advance of 2 lakh rupees and similarly if the dealer forfeits such advance because i have not taken delivery of the goods etc then also gst is not applicable because it does not qualify as supply therefore to sum up uh, there is no gst applicability as far as for feature of advances is concerned now discounts and incentives uh, this many of the dealers uh, have faced issues in the past also in service tax uh, along with fada also we organize a series of webinars in 2020 uh, when a lot of dealers were having these sort of investigations and demands etc and 
unfortunately these discounts incentives issue continues in gst regime as well so there are two type of discounts which happens uh, so say for example i am a dealer i am buying goods from a oem so uh, uh, say oem is maruti one set of discount can be that when maruti has Uh, supplied vehicles to me it gives a discount on the invoice so uh, as far as these discounts are concerned there is no controversy because uh, whatever net price uh, maruti is collecting from me they will pay gst on that the second set of discounts on which the issue comes up is that after the sale or supply has happened maruti may issue gst credit note or commercial credit notes for various type of discounts these discounts can be typically target discount if i buy or if i sell particular number of vehicles these discounts can be in relation to if i sell to a particular type of customer say for example government customer particular companies etc so the question is uh, what will be the gst treatment of such discounts now as far as these discounts are concerned maruti can issue a gst credit note in which they will give me a credit of both the basic amount as well as gst so when we talk about gst credit note say for example as a dealer i have bought a vehicle uh, worth say 5 lakh rupees from maruti and they are giving me a discount of 1 lakh so in that case uh when we are talking about gst credit note they will issue the credit note for 1 lakh basic and applicable gst as far as gst credit note is concerned whatever will be gst applicable maruti will get benefit because it will claim a tax adjustment as far as dealer is concerned dealer is required to reverse itc on such gst credit notes so Uh, the purpose of highlighting this is as dealers whatever gst credit notes we are getting we are supposed to reverse itc we are obligated to do that second is commercial credit notes there are many oems which do not issue gst credit notes so they issue only credit notes for uh, the basic value in those cases itc reversal is not needed the question which comes up is that in my example if i have got a credit note does it constitute a outward supply is it for any service which i am supplying to maruti or not here it's equally relevant how i am treating this transaction in books of accounts because in our experience we have seen that even though this transaction is relating to purchase of goods it should be set off it should be reduced from the purchase price but uh, number of dealers record it as other income which is a incorrect accounting treatment and service tax or gst authorities just bases the accounting treatment they have raised the demands so as far as a uh, question uh, as far as an illustration is concerned say maruti sold vehicle to me at 9 lakh rupees they paid gst on 9 lakh i sold vehicle at 7 lakhs to my customer i got a commercial credit note of 1 lakh because i have sold a uh, vehicle to customer at 7 lakh i have paid gst on 7 lakh only the next question which comes up is whether gst is payable on 8 lakhs meaning uh, 7 lakhs which i have collected from the customer as well as 1 lakh which i have got from maruti through a credit note on this specific issue also multiple questions have come in our view because either gst credit note or commercial credit notes you are only getting it for the purchase transaction so both initial sale of goods by maruti to me and the subsequent credit note needs to be seen together it's not for a distinct activity as a dealer you are only liable to pay gst on whatever you are collecting from customers as far as your gst liability on vehicle is concerned uh, 
credit notes issued to you by OEMs are irrelevant. Now, as far as jurisprudence is concerned, this discounts, uh, whether these are deductible or not, uh, this is more an issue from OEM's perspective. So OEMs need to prove that they have pre-communicated such discounts to dealers. But yes, on the second aspect, whether uh, as far as discount is concerned, it is towards any service which is being provided by uh, dealer to customer. There are multiple rulings, including Madras High Court and advanced rulings, which have said that as far as credit notes is concerned, there is no service which is being provided by dealer and therefore no separate GST is applicable. So if I have to sum up this discount and incentives issue, I'll sum up in this way. One, as dealers, if you're selling vehicle to a customer, you're liable to pay GST only on the amount you're collecting from the customer. Credit note value is totally irrelevant. Secondly, when you are getting any credit notes for discounts, these are as part and parcel of initial sale transactions only. These are not in respect of any services which you are rendering to dealer, uh, to the OEMs. So to that extent, again, no GST is applicable. Third and last point, which needs to be kept in mind is if <clears throat> you're getting any GST credit notes from the OEMs, you are liable to reverse ITC. Now proceeding further, the issue of ITC on demo vehicles. Again, on this, many questions have come up and these demo vehicles are typically um, used for demonstration test ride purposes to entice customers to buy the vehicles. Now, firstly, as far as law is concerned, in general, ITC on motor vehicles is not available. Only situation in which ITC on vehicles is allowed, and this is relevant for all the dealers is, if the vehicles are used for further supply, it means as dealers, if in general you are buying vehicles from OEM and selling, in that case, ITC is available. Now, the question to be tested is, as far as demo vehicle is concerned, are demo vehicles used for further supply or not? Now, coming to the jurisprudence, there are multiple favorable advanced rulings. And this is uh, uh, strange in the sense because most of the advanced rulings under GST are pro revenue only, but these are favorable advanced rulings, which have said that ITC on demo vehicles is available. But yes, there are few adverse ones as well. So the question is what is correct legal position? In our view, the correct legal position is that ITC on demo vehicles should be available because whatever is the life of those vehicles and generally these life are decided by the OEMs only that you use say for a particular number of kilometers or particular number of years, because once their useful life is over, these will be further supplied only. So if you have got a demo vehicle, you have used it for two years, Thereafter, two years, it will be sold only. And on that, you should pay applicable GST and you can claim full ITC on procurement of demo vehicle, test vehicles, etc. So again, this is a question which has been asked by many of the members. Now coming to schemes and uh, free supplies. So number of times it happens that when a customer is buying a vehicle, a dealer may come up with a scheme that, okay, along with the vehicle, I'll give you seat covers free, mats free, et cetera, et cetera. So the question is, will ITC be available on such uh, accessories or not? Under GST law, uh, a taxpayer can claim ITC on any goods which are used in course of furtherance of business. The only restriction is that it should not qualify as gift. Now, as far as free supplies is concerned, 
um, there are few advanced rulings which have taken a view that if gold coins are given to a customer, if some things are given as part of scheme, ITC is not available, but there are favorable ones as well. In our view, the correct legal position is that as far as these transactions are concerned, these form part and parcel of sale transaction. These are not uh, voluntarily or unilaterally gifts which are given to the customer and therefore ITC is available. Again, many questions came from the members on what should be the tax treatment on uh, sale of old vehicles. Uh, many OEMs and many dealers are in the business that they buy old vehicles, refurbish them and sell it. So under GST law, as far as these activities are concerned, uh, when a dealer is refurbishing a vehicle, GST is payable on the margin only, which is sale price less purchase price. So say for example, I have got an old vehicle for 2 lakh rupees. I have done uh, some repairing, etc. After that, I'm selling it at 3 lakh rupees. So here the margin will be 1 lakh, which is 3 lakh minus 2 lakh. So GST is payable on 1 lakh only. The rates are 12% to 18% depending upon CC and nature of vehicle. Very importantly, this margin scheme, this provides that you can pay uh, on margin, you can pay a lower rate of tax as compared to 28, 40, et cetera, provided you don't claim ITC on such vehicles. So in, in the example, which I gave when I bought old vehicle worth two lakh rupees, if the seller would have charged GST, I cannot claim ITC on such vehicles. Now, the question came up in uh, this advanced ruling in case of Deccan wheels that, uh, uh, okay, on procurement of vehicle of 2 lakh, I am not entitled for credit. Law is very clear on that. But if I'm incurring any expenses for repairing that vehicle, uh, suppose the ref refurbished vehicle, which I sold for 3 lakh rupees, uh, I incurred, uh, say, goods and services worth 50,000 for its repairing or refurbishment. And there's a GST component on that. So will I be entitled for ITC on that? In this advanced ruling, it was held that ITC is not available. In our view, the question comes up is whether this advanced ruling is correct. In our view, it's not correct. Uh, in our view, ITC, uh, as far as margin notification is concerned, it only says that ITC on procurement of vehicles is not available. It does not say that ITC on any goods and services which dealer is using is barred. Therefore, on all such goods and services, ITC can be claimed. Another issue which uh, we thought may be relevant is that uh, rate of GST on automobile parts. And why it may be relevant for us as well is because as far as repairing business is concerned, we raise invoices with uh, separate line items of parts which get used we, as well as the services. Now, the question is that if the OEM software has put say 18% GST on a uh, particular part, uh, can dealers apply the same? I think dealers practically apply the same and they cannot raise the invoice or they don't have an option to change the rate as well. But yes, one thing uh, we wish to highlight is that dealers are taxpayers under GST law. Therefore, if any short GST is being paid, then the liability will fall on GST only, uh, on the dealer only. So the dealers need to ensure that they charge correct GST on auto parts. And why we wish to highlight is that as far as auto parts is concerned, there are number of auto parts like fasteners, uh, instrument clusters, air springs, disc pads, etc., brake pads, etc., where the issue has gone to Supreme Court or advanced rulings where uh, the courts have consistently held that 
एच एस एन टू बी अप्लाइड शुड बी एट सेवन जीरो एट ओनली विच इज ट्वेंटी एट परसेंट जी एस टी सो द पर्पज ऑफ हाईलाइटिंग दिस वॉज दैट वी नीड टू एंश्योर दैट वी चार्ज करेक्ट रेट ऑफ जी एस टी ऑन पार्ट अदरवाइज वी विल बी हेल्ड लाइबल फॉर शॉर्ट पेमेंट ऑफ टैक्सेस नाउ after covering dealer specific issues we come to generic issues which will be relevant for everyone so the first issue is cross charge and uh, it will only be relevant for dealers who operate in multiple states it may happen that say a dealer is based in gujarat and he has operations in maharashtra also rajasthan also dealerships so it may happen that the head office in gujarat they support other offices which are say rajasthan and maharashtra uh, support can be in the form of accounting support administrative support management support so under gst law such activities qualify as service on which gst is payable and again the jurisprudence has been contrary whereas uh, uh, some uh, rulings have said that uh, 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 the dealer in sorry the head office in gujarat they have to take a isd registration also and do a cross charge but yes consistently they have held that cross charge of these common expenses needs to be necessarily done one thing we wish to highlight is that as far as cross charge is concerned the government has provided lot of leverage to the tax payers in the sense that they can adopt even a notional value in my example when they are billing it to uh, rajasthan location as well as maharashtra location and pay gst so the law permits a uh, dealer to adopt any value if the other registration is entitled for itc now uh before coming to reverse charge there are few questions also which we received on the taxability issue so i'll just take one by one one question was uh, whether gst is applicable on sale of fixed assets like furniture building etc uh, so as far as sale of fixed assets is concerned gst is applicable uh, the rate or the value which are prescribed in law is through a different formula but as far as building is concerned uh, there is no gst uh, another question which came was relating to uh, whether gst is applicable on fast tag pick and drop etc so uh, as far as pick and drop is concerned if you are charging the customer gst will apply as far as fast tag is concerned if you are incurring fast tag and uh, installing it in the customer and recovering it from him then it will be similar to uh, miscellaneous charges so whatever gst is applicable on the main vehicle that should apply uh, another question which came was uh, is gst applicable on insurance road tax number plate etc or not uh, in our view gst is not applicable because as far as these recoveries are concerned dealer acts as a agent of the customer because like insurance policy road tax receipts all these things are in the name of end customer only uh, uh whether gst is applicable on interest on fixed deposit security deposit answer is no so under gst law there is a specific exemption that on interest gst does not apply uh whether gst is applicable on petty amounts written off no because these are not towards any supplies so no gst is applicable last question which came on taxability was whether uh credit notes can be issued to b2c customers and adjustment can be claimed so the answer is the credit notes can be issued only for discounts so even if you have sold the goods to a customer and at the time of sale the discount was known to the customer so whether the customer is b2b or b2c you can claim a tax adjustment and you can issue a gst credit note so absolutely no issues now coming to reverse charge so reverse charge these are the list of goods and services 
uh, on which reverse charge is applicable. Uh, the ones which are relevant for uh, us may be legal services. If we avail any services from lawyers, if we avail any renting services for transportation of goods, if we act as a sponsor of an event, uh, for the services provided by director, company is liable. So here it will apply to all kinds of services which director applies including suppose director has given his property on rent or anything. The only exclusion is if director is acting as an employee uh, and uh, we are paying salary or other remuneration to him, uh, deducting TDS under section 192 of Income Tax Act, then uh, GST is not applicable. Otherwise, reverse charge is applicable. On all services which we are getting from the government also, which can be a ROC fee, which can be any licenses fee, etc. Unless it is less than 5,000, which is exempt or it's a uh, stamp duty, etc. Otherwise, GST will apply. If you are availing security services from non-corporates, GST is applicable. And if you are getting services from an overseas company. Ag again, on reverse charge, there was one question which was asked was, that if we are availing brokerage and contract labor services from unregistered uh, persons, then whether GST is applicable or not. So the answer is GST is applicable only on the services which are in front of you on the slides like security and all those things. Otherwise, in general, if you're getting a contract labor or brokerage, etc., then the liability is on service provider only. If uh, he is below the threshold limit, he is not charging. Even if he is above threshold limit and he is not charging, liability will not come on us. Now, the last part relating to input tax credit. Now, here also a lot of questions have come up. So what we have done is uh, because the whole purpose of introduction of GST was to allow or credit of all expenses which are incurred for the purpose of business. So we have put the conditions what are applicable for claiming credits. So if a dealer is receiving services from a supplier, supplier can be the OEM from whom he gets the goods. Supplier can be service providers like advertising companies, auditors, lawyers, etc. So the conditions is first condition, he should receive goods or services. Second, he should have a valid document like an invoice. These are important on which many questions have come, uh, which has been introduced from January 2022. So the condition is that he should have furnished, uh, supplier should have furnished his GSTR 1 and it should have appeared in GSTR 2B of the dealer. So this is a new condition. So uh, this has been introduced from January 2022. So the purpose of this condition is that they are equating GST to be exactly similar to 26AS system. Like in 26AS, while filing your income tax return, you only get credit of whatever TDS is reflected in 26AS. So from Jan 22 onwards, only the credits which are being reflected in uh, uh, GSTR 2B will be eligible for credit. So they have removed earlier buffer of 5%, uh, etc. So this is an important change. Uh, this is again a new change which they have proposed in the budget yet to be implemented that uh, it should not fall under category of restricted credits in 3B. Now, uh, for the purpose of taking credit, we need to ensure that uh, the invoices which are issued by suppliers, um, they have proper contents as well. Uh, these are the restrictions uh, under GST on which ITC is not available, like motor vehicles we discussed, uh, uh, food, beverages, insurance, club membership gifts, uh, goods lost, etc. Construction of immobile property. 
So as far as immovable property is concerned, only the civil part is res restricted. So if as a dealer, I'm setting up a new showroom, I can structure my uh, uh, procurement in such a way that I can award a separate contract for civil and separate part for say electrical, sanitary, etc. So on electrical, sanitary, etc., I can claim ITC. If any goods are used for personal consumption are not eligible for ITC. And last and importantly, if any tax has been paid on account of fraud, means a supplier did not pay on his own and uh, it was paid after pointing out by the authorities. So these are the list of ITC which are ineligible. So again, a uh, couple of questions which, uh, which were sent to FADA were, uh, so one question was if we are transporting spares to different locations on transportation service will be entitled for ITC. So the answer is yes, it is not restricted. Second question was whether business promotion expenses are eligible for ITC. So again, answer is yes, it's not restricted. Lastly, under GST, as we see uh, 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 with each passing day, government is adding more and more reconciliations, which they expect taxpayers or dealers to do, uh, starting with liability in GSTR 1 and GSTR 3B. Uh, one and three B versus nine. Now they have started asking eBay bills reconciliation with three B. ITC in three B is it matching with two B or not? Three B versus nine. So lots of these reconciliations that department is asking. So uh, the purpose of putting this list was that our books of accounts should be totally in order and. Uh, Secondly, we need to ensure that uh, all uh, books of accounts and whatever disclosures, whatever liabilities we are filing in our returns, those totally match up with our books of accounts. Uh, coming to the last slide way forward. Um, uh, so what we suggest to each and every dealer is that because uh, in GST, so many issues have come up both legal, operational, etc. So it will be good for dealers to do a health check, uh, maybe internally or through a professional expert to ensure that uh, they are following correct tax positions. Uh, they are doing all compliances. They are taking corrective steps. And yes, they need to be ready with departmental audits and investigations in this year, this being the last year for 2017-18. Uh, with this, we come to uh, end of our presentation and over to you, Saiji. Uh, should we start taking up Q&A or? Uh... Yeah, sure. Or Sehaji, yeah, please. Yeah, thanks, Puneet, for uh, such an in uh, detail or in-depth, I should say, uh, probably uh, I guess most of the questions uh, which the participants had uh, posted, uh, I guess more than 50% have already been answered by your team. So it's a terrific job which doing online also. And uh, the questions which we had received uh, and we had forwarded to you, mostly you've taken care of that also. So I'd just like you to probably deliberate more on uh, the first point which we discussed on the point of sale and the uh, taxation on it. because. What happens is that uh, in most of the OEMs, the, uh, we have a DMS system. The moment we do a new car billing outside the state, it's the IGST, it's what is applicable. Mm -hmm. But as far as what the understanding which you gave today was that since you are delivering the vehicle from your showroom, so probably we need to put uh, instead of IGST, it has to be more of CGST and SGST and not IGST. So probably we'll like more deliberation on it. That's one. Second, uh, we've, we've had instances wherein one dealer is giving his particular vehicles as stock transfer to another vehicle in another state. So what happens in those cases? Mm -hmm. So that's that's one point I'd like you to please uh, yeah. clarify more because there are a lot of uh, queries on this. Sure, sure. Yeah. So... Uh... So Saiji, uh, let me take your second question, which is easier. Uh, 
Uh, so if you're located in two states and if you stock transfer the vehicles, um, say from state A to state B, then we have to apply IGST only because the vehicles are physically moving um, and applicable GST has to be paid. And uh, again, on the stock transfer, the government has given a flexibility to you. You can adopt any value for a vehicle of 5 lakh. You can adopt 5 lakh also. You can adopt 1000 also. You can adopt 10 lakh also. So why I'm highlighting this is uh, because the government has given this leverage, this can be an opportunity for dealers who may have accumulated credit in one state and paying tax in cash in other state to balance it out. As far as first issue is concerned, so Saiji, I fully agree with you that even if we say that this is a correct rate of tax because the uh, OEM billing system uh, is pre-configured, Therefore, you can't do anything. Uh, so let me elaborate it again. So if I'm a dealer in Delhi and I get a customer from Haryana, there can be two situations. First situation is as a dealer, I have to deliver the goods to customer's location in Haryana. In that case, because delivery is happening in Haryana, if you're charging IGST, that's totally fine. On the other hand, if the customer comes to the dealer's doorsteps in Delhi, and takes delivery and takes goods to Haryana. In our view, the correct legal position is uh, a local uh, CGST plus SGST should apply. Uh, that's a correct position. Uh, if you feel that uh, we will not be able to change our billing softwares, etc., then I suggest you convert second situation into first in the sense that you take responsibility uh, see, because uh, it will be just a freight or transportation charges only. Uh, you can uh, have a contract that you will deliver the vehicle to him in Haryana. In that case, IGST will be totally justified. Otherwise, uh, uh, I feel that you run the risk that whatever 28, 40, 45% tax you have paid, there is a risk of same amount being demanded again. Uh, for outside customers where uh, you're delivering goods at the showroom. Okay. Yeah. So, but uh, can you just elaborate again what uh, what do we need to do for uh, vehicles which we have already supplied till date? Is, is there is a remedy available? No, no, there's no remedy. There are contrary rulings, etc. We need to fight only. In any okay. case, uh, you can always take guys of... Uh, the OEM also that your software was suggesting this. So we have done that, but for future only, you can take corrective steps for past. You cannot. Okay. Yeah. So probably uh, for past, we can only make uh, probably notes wherein uh, we show that the supply has been if, done outside state. If it's possible. Yeah, you yeah. can. Yeah. But uh, do we need to uh, have uh, expenses against each and every supplier to justify that we have supplied? Or it's no, hi. you need to have proper records, including you must be maintaining registers that wherever your drivers are delivering. Okay. So those okay. registers will not have any entry. So that's why I said to the extent possible. Yeah, It's, a, it's, it's unfortunate. Is, it's unfortunate. And uh, Saiji, Vinkeshji, Sarji, one overall last point Mala, I had for you is that with so many controversies as dealers, uh, we should focus on doing our business rather than sorting this ta tax issues. I'm sure in the past we would have made representations to the government. We can make one more attempt that you make it either way clear na, so that OEMs, we, everyone is clear so that no sure. disputes here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's right. That's right. So, so yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry. You, please no. go. Please. Ha. So should I uh, see Q&A chat box? If anything is left, I can take them. Yeah, you can do that. You can do that. Because for me, it's it's 86 more questions which are still <laughs> showing. So it's, uh -huh. it's going to be difficult. Uh, in the meantime, what I'll do is I've made some notes out of it. Ha -ha, please, so please. You've, you've highlighted on the uh, handling and the logistic charges. I guess uh, now everyone is clear that as far as handling and logistic charges are concerned, we're going to charge the same rate which is applicable with the product or yeah, the invoice. Right, so right. It, it's, it cannot be 18%. It has to be yeah, either 48% or right. 40%. Right. So whatever okay. applies. Yeah. So one thing I need to clarify over here is, so you talked about the same for the miscellaneous charges uh, yeah. with the dealer is charging and right. the time of delivery. Right. So there was a question which was related to registration. Mm -hmm. 
so uh, there was one other uh, related to hsrp but i don't think that any of the dealer is making any separate bill for hsrp because HR, hsrp is included in the invoice price itself okay, okay so for so for registration if a dealer is charging say 1000 rupees extra from the customer as registration charges which by the way is illegal he is not supposed to charge it uh, under the government regulation but still if he if he is going ahead and doing it so uh, what would be the rate of charges on that no so uh, is he uh, in your example is he recovering whatever he has incurred or he is charging like a service fee or uh, over it's, and above actual cost so he is probably uh, one he is recovering his cost for the uh, services that he has given for registering that vehicle and probably he is gaining something out of it hmm. okay so then it will be uh, same as handling and logistic charges only okay but here i'll recommend every uh, yeah. participant is that don't yeah. charge it as registration yeah. charges probably it can be under the head of handling and logistic charges yeah handling and uh, charges. yeah yeah many of them do it like a miscellaneous charges or service charges also yeah, yeah absolutely absolutely yeah. yeah so as far as uh, booking cancellation uh, the new vehicle booking cancellation is concerned you've already clarified that we need not show that we've uh, given any services so there is no yeah. requirement for yeah. any yeah. Uh, No, actually, as a matter of fact, you have not given any services. You have not sold any Absolutely. goods. Absolutely. So, Absolutely. Uh, and in our experience, we saw many dealers are paying GST on it of eighteen okay. percent, which is an extra cost. So, okay. yeah, that they can stop, and even for the past, they can consider claiming refunds as well for last two years. Yeah. So, uh, on demo vehicles, you said that we can claim uh, input credit. Yeah. But here, like, I like you to elaborate more because, see, demo vehicles are two in nature one uh, is a demo vehicle which the dealer buys in his own name and the vehicle is registered so what is the kind of entry that he is supposed to do when he is uh, actually capitalizing that good buying that vehicle and how is how is he going to take the input credit the second scenario is wherein the demo vehicle is unregistered so probably that vehicle remains in its stock so i don't think the case of any input credit is required mm-hmm. uh, last uh, in demo is that when you sell a demo vehicle whether it's a registered demo vehicle or a unregistered demo vehicle what would be the treatment of gst mm-hmm. okay so uh, uh, so sai ji uh, amongst the two categories uh, let's take second category where you were showing it as a stock in trade only where you have not capitalized etc in that case there is absolutely no issues because uh, it's part of your regular stock in trade only and you are selling it as well Uh, the only thing i want to highlight is that if the dealers are showing it as stock in trade that may not be a correct accounting treatment because that vehicle was not meant to be sold as such it was meant to be used for the purpose of your business so the correct accounting is actually it should be capitalized till you uh, uh, sell the uh, used vehicle as far as first category is concerned on demo vehicles because um as i explained under gst law itc is available uh if the vehicles are further supplied uh, to that extent any vehicle which you are uh, purchasing be it demo vehicle or stock in trade etc it will eventually be sold further only unless it gets destroyed or something like that so in our view itc is available so the members can claim itc but yes one thing i wish to highlight is that uh, this is likely to be a litigated topic because advance rulings are also contrary and some advance ruling uh, they have taken a plea that because it is not sold in the same form it is being used by the dealer in our view that's a incorrect point they are taking so legally itc is available but yeah if uh, if a particular dealer wants to be conservative do not want to have any dispute etc then he can consider avoiding this and uh, is there any uh, duration or time limit by when we uh, sell the demo vehicle no no or... there is none there is none so uh, i was told that uh, if you sell a uh, vehicle which is as registered in the dealer's name after 5 years then you not no. supposed to pay any no no nothing you... like that so whenever you sell you you pay the yeah. gst which was on the pay. yeah correct on the oh. sale price and... yeah and here i like to you to elaborate more on is that uh, apart from demo vehicles there are uh, we, there are dealers who actually buy vehicles in their own name which probably is used by their staff for uh, 
going to home coming back to right. office right, right. or probably they they add up vehicles which are known as courtesy cars so in right. case a customer's vehicle goes off yeah so there's a replacement car given to the customer yeah. so even in even those vehicles we can claim input credit we, we can claim input credit because eventually even those cars will be sold further um, okay. and uh, gst needs to be paid on that so even those okay. cars are eligible for itc yeah yeah see as far as the uh, input uh, credit is concerned or the claiming of the input is concerned so you had uh, elaborated in your slide that the various scenarios wherein the input is allowed and the restrictions wherein the input is not allowed so since you have an automobile background from maruti see most of the billings happen in month end and say on 31st december a billing happens to a dealer and uh, in the deal when is the dealer supposed to take the input okay. credit okay because because in uh, 2b it reflects in december it yeah. will not reflect in january yeah yeah so mm. these but so, the the actual goods he would mm. probably be receiving in on 3rd or 4th of yeah. january yeah yeah so so sai ji uh, like in our slides we put the first condition for claiming itc is receipt of goods so if mm. a oem has billed goods to you on 31st december and you have received on 3rd uh, january then you can claim itc on that in the month of january only so even though it's coming in to be uh, but uh, 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 i think government is doing or government will do that so to be will start coming on a cumulative basis so even in january is to be it will appear so you can do that and uh, sai ji just to draw comparison similar thing happens in income tax also 26 as that suppose there is a change in year etc so you can carry forward that tds and claim adjustment in future years so here in your example it will be in january only but uh, as on day i guess i've been told that if it's there in 2b for december it will not show in uh, january or you probably can no. carry forward no 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 you have a mismatch no no so uh, one under law you cannot claim in december Uh, you can expect that authorities will disallow it secondly because this 2b is a new thing and this matching condition has been recently introduced so they are amending those utilities and reports etc so if in your case it has come in 2b of december and mm -hmm. you have received the goods in january you can claim the credit absolutely no issues if a reconciliation comes we can give the explanation this will be a correct position vis-a-vis claiming credit in december only when goods have been not received okay yeah so so what you're saying is that we should claim it only when we receive the goods yeah. not before that yeah okay. yeah provided and it has come in to be either in the same month or earlier months okay yeah and i guess there was another question that because uh, month end you are required to do the billing also uh, to the customer and there are goods which are in transit yeah so what would be the scenario in that case in that case uh, there is no issue uh, if uh, matlab under gst whether you have dispatched the goods or not if you have raised the invoice you are required to pay gst but yeah if the customer is b2b and he is entitled for itc same thing will happen to him as well if he okay. deliver if he receives the goods in the month of january he can claim itc in january only okay yeah so uh, i'm i'm just taking few of the questions sure, uh, sure. which uh, so there's one question from a mercedes benz dealer so mercedes benz have shifted to a new uh, retail policy where right, right. they don't do the billing and the billing happens from mercedes yeah, so yeah. he is mentioning that under mercedes benz new agency model we can take input credit on demo vehicles dealer is not selling the new uh, cars they are working as agents for mercedes benz yeah yeah they can claim because eventually okay. even this car will be further sold and as i explained that uh, like it will be a business promotion so uh, there is no bar yeah so then there is a question basis on the refund i guess you already clarified it uh, whether the motor vehicle used by a partner for business further its purpose so here uh, the question is that if a vehicle is used by the director or the dealer principal or the business partner a uh, same logic happens? for like you mentioned for employees pick and drop and courtesy cars okay. so same logic okay. yeah is this it so yeah. you can probably you can probably purchase uh, vehicles from uh, other oems as well say if, if i am a dealer yeah, yeah, of yeah. skoda whichever is in the company's name uh, so yeah, as saying, a skoda if you have got a mercedes benz that's also fine yeah 
So I can I can claim yeah. input credit for a Mercedes Benz. Mercedes used. Benz because eventually that Mercedes Benz car will be sold on payment of GST. So it will be further supplied only. Okay. But it won't be it won't be used for furtherance of my business. It won't affect. That. No, it will be for furtherance of business only because um, uh, if not as courtesy car etc. Like from an income tax perspective, you'll be capitalizing and claiming depreciation. It means if you have given to say a CEO of your company or a director etc. You're treating that it is for the purpose of business. Okay. Yeah. That's a that's a new thing. Thanks for enlightening yeah. us on yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. So, Sahaj, I would request you probably also because there are a lot of questions. It would take a lot of time for me to go through these questions. <laughs> so, I think the best person on the job is Puniji himself because he can quickly. Okay. Uh -huh. Maybe uh, I'll just quickly glance. Uh, yeah. If uh, um, so, Sahaji and Saiji, if there are uh, questions which are relevant for everyone, I'll just pick them. If there are any dealer specific issues, I'll just skip them. Um, So there's one, uh, uh, yes, Arjee, please. There's one question from Mr. Sanskar Gupta. He's asking, what is the current accounting entry for commercial credit notes in the books of a dealer? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, so Sahaji, I, I think this I explained also that uh, the correct entry is that it should be reduced from purchases only. So whatever commercial credit notes we are getting from OEM, um, we should reduce our purchases to that extent. Uh, then there's one question from Sid, mix supply view in case of service repairs plus parts. So here Sid, uh, uh, there is a department circular which says that these are to be treated as uh, different supplies. So goods will attract goods rate, services will attract service rates. Cancellation we have covered. Um, demo we have covered handling charges we have covered so venkat gampa any section number i think he's asking for handling charges so venkat gampa it will be uh, uh, the composite supply provisions only so Puneet, i'd like to ask you one clarification. So uh, yeah. you said that if a dealer is uh, buying a vehicle from other manufacturer, he can claim the input credit. Yeah. So same holds true even for a customer. If a customer is a registered uh, GST payer and yeah. if he's buying a car from us, yeah. can can he also take input credit on our cars? Yeah, yeah, because eventually he'll be selling the car only after some period. Okay. I don't think any of the customers are taking input credit. Yeah. Because uh, uh, Saiji, like I highlighted, na, there are contrary rulings and mm. uh, many of the people, uh, they want to play safe. Plus what they do is that uh, as far as GST part is concerned, they capitalize that as well as and claim depreciation. So at least mm. some benefit they get and avoid yeah. the dispute as well. Okay. Yeah. So Sahaji, most of the questions we have actually covered. Yeah. So uh, at least I'm not finding anything because I no, think no, this. Yeah. The one thing uh, which I'd like you to clarify more yeah. on is, uh, especially for the commercial vehicles. Mm -hmm. uh, as on day, we've seen a scenario wherein the commercial vehicles there are hefty discounts going on, and when they're bidding those vehicles, it's been billed on the hundred percent uh, egg showroom price because the customer needs uh, more of a uh, finance facility. And uh, once the billing is done, immediately there is a credit note which is uh, given to the customer for the value of discount. And it's mentioned in the contract note also. Pre and why this happened. discount Why this discount is given? So uh, this discount is basically, is discount basically comes from the uh, manufacturer only. So the, there, are, there are schemes uh, wherein uh, for selling your vehicle, you are passing on to the customer. But... Uh, only reason why it is not being done in the invoice is because of the finance issue. Okay. Because if you, if, if say, yeah, a finance, is for, yeah, finance will be lesser amount. Finance would be on the, uh, finance is always on the, extra, on the invoice price. So if yeah. you reduce the discounts from the invoice, 
So even the finance goes down. Okay. And uh, sorry, just asking, uh, this finance company doesn't see the contract that mentions this so count. They, and... they, <laughs> so it's a it's a funny scenario. See, as only everyone everyone is wanting to do the business. So uh-huh. they they know more than the dealers or the customers. Right, right. The prevailing prevailing discounts are there in the market, hmm. but they go, they go by the document. So the if okay, the okay. invoice price is ten lakh rupees, they'll fund the customer according to ten lakh. Mm-hmm. They uh-huh. they know there is a they know there is a two lakh rupees credit note which the customer would be getting. So hmm. what would be the treatment on in, in that particular scenario? Uh, no. So your question is, uh, can a GST credit note be issued? So my question is, can a GST credit note be issued? See, because uh, even the uh, customers are of two types. The transporters are of two types. A who take GST input, B huh. who don't take GST inputs. Mm-hmm. So uh, we've been told or we've been made to understand that if you're doing it from B to B, then probably you can issue credit notes. If you're doing from B to C, then credit note cannot be issued. Okay. And there can be a liability okay, when okay. there are audits. Okay, okay. I, I got it. Uh, uh, so, <clears throat> so Saiji, if this discount is pre-communicated, which in our case it is because it's forming part of the contract, then under GST law, we have both the options irrespective of customer. Uh, so let's firstly take a, a B2B customer who is entitled for ITC. So suppose, uh, as a dealer, you have charged GST on 10 lakhs. He has taken credit of 10 lakhs. Then. Uh, even though you can issue both credit notes, what I'll suggest to you is you issue a financial credit note only on, only of the basic amount because uh, ITC or GST is not a loss for you or him. As far as B2C customer, there's absolutely no bar. You can issue a GST credit note. In fact, you should issue a GST credit note because uh, otherwise on 2 lakh, whatever GST is, that will become an extra cost. So for exactly. B2C customer, GST credit note is allowed if discounts are pre-communicated. Yes. In B2B also, I guess if we issue a credit note, the uh, the purchase invoice for the customer goes down. So he'll, he'll take the less of credit he'll get. No, he, uh, so it will be uh, neutral in the sense okay. as a dealer, he will get GST refund mm-hmm. and uh, customer has to reverse GST credit. So it will okay. knock off. Huh? It will knock off. Huh. Because it's knocking off, that's why I was suggesting that uh, you can issue a credit note only of the basic value if okay. uh, it's a B2B. Otherwise, you should issue a GST credit note. So absolutely no bar. And I think this question was also raised by someone um, okay. in the question sent to FADA. Yeah. So you, what you suggest is that we should uh, issue a credit note only for the base value without uh, as far as B2, as far as B2B customers are concerned. For B2C, you should issue a, a GST credit note so that you get refund of extra GST. Okay. Yeah. So, so I guess uh, coming into me, uh, coming on my WhatsApp number also. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll just pick up one question. Sure, uh, sure. Maybe it says uh, if any insurance company is providing coupons on base of commission, and if we purchase any gifts for customers or employees, can we take input tax benefit? on invoicing as well as how can we show it in our books? Um, so uh, because uh, these things are coming like gifts from insurance company, we will not be recording it as any procurements, etc. So uh, we'll not be entitled for any GST credit. Okay. Yeah. So what I'll suggest is uh, we'll, uh, it, it doesn't make sense uh, because I, what I can see is there are more than now 160 odd questions in the chat yeah. box and we've got separate questions also. Most of the questions have been answered, but still if there is anything which is unanswered, I'll probably request Puniji and uh, Deepakji to probably uh, give us those answers so that we from FADA can sure. probably sure. Uh, answer these dealers directly. Sure, sure. Uh, but it's been a very intruding session. It's been a learning experience for us. It's been an eye-opener, I should say, at least for me and for the participants because there are a lot of things which probably still uh, we have we don't have the clarity. And uh, as you said that uh, probably we from FADA need to step in because... Uh, we are more into uh, doing business of selling and repairing cars. We're not there to probably ensure that whether the tax is being yeah, uh, correct, correct. being deposited in the correct head or not. There's no tax evasion, but still if the 
dealers are uh, harassed by the authorities uh, once the audit starts and as you say that audit has already started for the year 1718 so probably uh, we'll take your help in this but sure. uh, sure, in sure. case of any uh, paper needs to be prepared or given to the yeah. finance ministry or yeah, the gst yeah. council correct correct and maybe what what i can do is i'll just project my screen for a few seconds so uh, that has my email id number and our firms etc as well so if any dealer have any specific issues uh, they can reach out to us as well uh, plus yes uh, sai ji you correctly mentioned that as a uh, fada also we can consider uh, making representation on some of these issues yeah uh so um sai ji or sir ji should we wind up or uh... yes yes so before doing that yeah. sir, a few questions a uh, few comments coming in that if this presentation can be shared yeah so, so we'll just share a, a pdf version with you sir ji yes. so then you can circulate to the members yeah great great so uh, thank you puneet ji uh, sai ji i will request you to kindly give the vote of thanks and then then bring this webinar session to its uh, logical end so uh, thank you puneet ji thank you uh, for this uh, session and uh, we can probably see by the slides that you prepared there is a lot of work which has gone in before this uh, presentation came to us because and uh, the slides which you prepared is basically specific to our business only to the questions which uh, which we are uh, given to you beforehand so we we can understand the kind of uh, back end work you and probably your team has done and the way uh, probably your team has taken up the questions uh, on, live on the show it it shows uh, the way that you guys work and uh, we're really grateful to you for for you being associating with us and probably helping our members and uh, this is not the last session we'll be having we'll be troubling you more and since you have already shared your email id and your even your contact numbers i'm sure that probably you will be having queries directly from dealers across india so uh, thank you very much uh, for sparing time for us for preparing such a slide which is uh, directly related to our business and uh, looking forward to more such sessions in future sure uh, thank you sai ji yeah thank you thank you so thank you all participants with this uh, we will close this session i hope all of you had an enriching webinar session which fda brought to all of you uh, in times to come we'll keep uh, building on the knowledge of gst since the time gst came in we did uh, multiple sessions uh, going to different states uh, state capitals then with uh, puri ji's help we did zone wise gst sessions when discounts incentives matter were at its peak um, uh, we tried to imbibe knowledge amongst all the members and uh, this is a yet another uh, session which we did with all of you today uh, in in future also we'll keep uh, enriching your knowledge in gst and any other tax related issues but for the time being this is from this is all from our side hope all of you have a great weekend ahead thank you and have a good day yeah thank, thank you, you sir harshi yeah you.